All right, everyone, when you think of Apple, you think Steve Jobs. But as the new film Jobs shows, there was actually a lot more behind the company than just one man. John Scully was brought on by Steve as Apple's CEO back in 1983 and served in that role for 10 years. He joins us right now here on set to discuss the company, its future, and of course, his portrayal in the film. John, welcome to Street Smart. Good to have you here. Thanks, Trish. Nice to be here. So Matthew Modine is playing you uh, in the film. You told me earlier he came out and spent a little time with you. He did. Uh, he is a terrific guy, and uh, we've stayed in touch with each other you know, over the last year. And um, mm -hmm. I haven't seen the movie, so I can't tell you much about it. I know Steve Wozniak has seen parts of it. He said it, it doesn't bear much to, with reality, but you know it's, this is about entertainment. Uh, well, but it's, yeah, it's, it's Hollywood. Uh, yeah, it's Hollywood. So what do, what do you think um, he was trying to zero in on when, when he spent time with you? I think he was trying to kind of, you know, capture, you know, my personality, and uh, I think Ashton Kushner was trying to capture Steve's, and so, um, you know, hopefully it'll, it'll all come off in, uh, in an effective way. You are said to have had a very different management style. How would you say the two of you differed? Well, we had a different mission from the board. Uh, my mission was to keep the Apple II going to generate as much cash as possible because the Apple III had failed, Lisa had failed, uh, Apple II was getting pretty old, and the company didn't have any other you know, cash flow coming in. And we needed three years before the Mac actually got developed and out into the market and before it made any money. The big blow up between Steve and me uh, was never about um, the, the future of his vision. It was because Steve was discouraged that the Mac wasn't selling in 1985. He wanted to drop the price. He wanted to cut the advertising on the Apple II. And I said, that's crazy because we've got to keep the cash flow coming into the company. And so that was what the disagreement was, was about. Eventually it, it all came to a head. It did, yeah. He was it, forced out. I mean, you, you effectively, uh, can I say fired him? I mean, Steve well, Jobs. I did, no, I didn't fire him uh, as, as much as that's the, the uh, sort of myth. Uh, it was the board who went off and did an independent study uh, about Steve's position, about my position, and came back and said, you know, we agree with John. Uh, Steve wasn't ever fired. Uh, he was asked to step down as head of the Mac division. Uh, I think the, the board could have done it another way because I didn't want to take over the company. Uh, Steve loved the company. He, he founded it. My gosh, it's his vision. Uh, I think they could have figured out a way where we could have coexisted, but. Uh, I couldn't be the CEO of a public company and let it um, you know, right. start to lose money. But Lynn, that said, uh, they maybe could have found a way. Do you think in some way, shape, or form it actually helped Steve Jobs to become uh, more of a visionary? I mean, when he came back to Apple and, and led it to, to new greatness, I mean, did it actually help him ultimately? Well, I don't think it changed his vision because the ideas that uh, I learned working with Steve for three years, I mean, we were together almost every day from morning till night, and uh, he had all the vision. I mean, we were working on Mac phone back in 1984, even though you couldn't build it. So it wasn't a vision issue. It was an issue of, you know, Steve maturing and becoming uh, a, a less mercurial executive. Mm -hmm. And obviously, he turned out to be a spectacular executive. But that was 15 years later. What so about the way it helped him? Yeah. What about vision today? That's that's the uh, the mythical question. One, or maybe not so mythical when it comes to uh, Tim Cook. Does he have it? Well, I think Tim Cook is an outstanding executive, and Apple's lucky to have him as CEO. Uh, what I'm watching for are the expectations that Tim has set up for some really great products coming up. So, for example, um, I think they have a, a, a great opportunity. I have no inside information, so I'm just speculating. I think they have a great opportunity with wearables, uh, with an iWatch. Because what people haven't focused on is the incredible value of iTunes and app stores, sure. about $16 billion of revenue. And iTunes has 550 million credit cards, uh, you know, information on that. Imagine if you took that and put that into an iWatch and you enabled people to very easily do purchases. I mean, that would open up an entirely new uh, differentiated product leveraging their yeah. most valuable asset, which, which is their and to end services. Really quick before we let you go, are you worried at all about how you'll be portrayed in this film? Uh, not really. I mean, I, I suspect uh, um, that it'll be a little bit of Hollywood in this, so they'll over dramatize things. Steve Wozniak saw it and said it's, you know, it's not much to do with anything he remembers happening, but so what? <laughs> <laughs>